Um, also, underneath the viewer menu, you'll actually see I've got the quality set to better performance. Um, reason for this is I'm dealing with red raw material and I don't have a red rocket card, so again, this is the next best thing to enable real-time playback. As you folks can see, this system has an 8-core CPU in it, a Xeon. It has two of the AMD Fire Pro D700 graphics cards as well as 64 gigabytes of RAM. This isn't an inexpensive system. In fact, this system probably costed a good seven, maybe even closer to $8,000. I'd expect an $8,000 system to play raw red one Kodak, the R3D Kodak, at full resolution. Instead of being at better performance, it should be at better quality. So the actual project itself is a 4K project. Uh, running at uh, 24 frames per second. Um, if I skim this project here you can see um, what I've actually done is I've added a few effects um, to this clip here in the uh, timeline. If I play this back um, again you'll see that it's playing back uh, no drop frame indicator has appeared so it is playing this back frame for frame in real time. If we take a look up here in the inspector you can see the sorts of effects that I've added. Uh, this is not necessarily a, uh, an effect that you want to recreate, but just purely out of interest. Uh, here's the number of effects that we've got. So we've got 50s TV, 1, Add Noise, 2, Aged Film, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and it's still playing. 11, <laughs> 12, <laughs> 13, <laughs> 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, <laughs> and the thing is still playing back in real time. So that's 18 effects on 4K Red Raw on the new Mac Pro with Final Cut Pro 10.1. Pretty amazing. It's not amazing for a seven or $8,000 computer system to play back Red One Kodak in better preview performance rather than better quality. A lot of people know this is, you're seeing Red One Kodak and Blackmagic Design. I'm getting a lot of real time. Like I said, I hear it never looks all that great, but going out to, to that client monitor using the broadcast quality equipment, just super smooth and silky playback. And I wanted to actually show people, you know, my system playing all these 4K files, a combination of Blackmagic Design and Red One. I'm not dropping any frames, it's playing silky smooth. Now, with Final Cut Pro 10, I have heard people say if you use AJA or Blackmagic Design or even the Matrox products, that it can actually lose some of its real time performance. I can say Premiere Pro really doesn't take a hit if I, un if I unhook the, the intensity. Uh, shuttle, my USB 3.0 shuttle from Blackmagic Design, I wouldn't notice any loss in real-time performance or, or any gains. It really doesn't have it. But here we're seeing multiple layers of, of the red one, and I'm actually making the filter switch over time, plus the transition. So there's a lot of real-time playback, several layers of, of the red one Kodak. And I can actually play that again really quick. And what you're going to see is that the corner ones in black and white will turn to color the one in the middle it's chroma keyed is in color and that one went to black and white so i'm actually playing you know the color correction stuff like that and transition all this simultaneously and, and the filters are actually like i said changing their parameters over time so when people say that you know premiere pro can't edit 4k it can. It can end at 4K really easy and at quarter resolution, but you're still getting a lot better resolution than, than, than DVD. Granted, it's not as high as 1920 by 1080, but the image will look, look super smooth, and you won't see any, like, pixelation or anything like that, even on brick buildings and stuff like that. The image will, will look just fine at quarter resolution if you're playing 4K back. So if I'm actually playing Blackmagic Design, uh, Kodak back, not the red one, but Blackmagic Design, which is actually uh, Apple ProRes resolution. I can actually watch that at half resolution and get like two picture-in-pictures out of it. 
I believe they did their video in December 2013. I assembled my computer, I think, in March of 2014. In one of my other videos, I showed the motherboard, which is the $60 motherboard. The CPU is, is mediocre. I mean, at the time I built mine, you probably could have built the whole thing for probably, I'm guessing around $700, including the operating system. So... Yeah, you wouldn't need to spend seven thousand dollars to edit 4k footage and like i said i mean i'm sure a client would rather look at my system than look at this i i wish they would have had like an aja or a matrox card that they could have output to 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 a client monitor rather than just having you know the client look at a computer monitor on this machine if it's not connected to a capture device right now we're going out hdmi and we're doing a screen capture right so that that affects the performance i'm not sure if my viewers understand what they're saying they're saying that they're actually taking one of the display port outputs and running it into a capture device so they can kind of capture the screen rather than rely on screen capture software. And they're saying that outputting towards that port affects the real time performance. On Premiere Pro, whether I just took, you know, my graphics card and had the graphic user interface of the software on one you know, monitor, and then I use the other monitor to do the real-time preview, or whether I use, you know, the Intensity Shuttle Pro, the USB version, it, I don't notice any real-time loss either way. So they kind of gave us a, a clue that, hey, you might lose some real-time effects by using broadcast quality equipment or even just, you know, using one of your um, outputs of your of your actual video card. As you folks can see, they spent $6,800 just for the Mac Pro. Plus, they had to spend quite a lot of money on that external RAID controller device. I do want to address something from the last episode. Okay. Because we talked about a, a pure red raw workflow. Right. We're working straight with R3D files, in fact, in this project right here. And um, we're playing back in real time. We did not optimize the media, so we're playing the original R3D files, and it plays back beautifully. Um, there's a particular reason it plays back so well. And if we go up to the top right corner here under the display and quality options, you can see that we're set for better performance. And that's really the key. It's the default setting, and that's what allows us to get this playback that we're getting. If you were to select better quality, uh, you're not going to be able to play back uh, this red raw straight. Now, I, I don't know why you, you would. What you can do if you choose better quality, we can look at this and see if you see a difference when I choose it in the, in the image. Any, see anything happen? No, I, I haven't <laughs> really seen anything. Now, on a 4K monitor, you would probably you see, see a, little, right. a little bit of change because the better performance, we are looking basically at this quarter to Bayer, so it is it's sort of sort of a essentially a kind of a compressed version of it. Right, but it's extremely high quality. Very. Um, that allows you to cut and work, and then when you export, you never you don't need to switch. This is not like a proxy thing where you need to switch back before you export. I mean, you just just it's work just it. a playback thing. When you consider how much they spent on the system, I would expect it to be able to play it back at better quality versus better performance. I mean, like I said, I mean, you can get a, a Dell or an HP for like $1,000 that could do the same thing that this Mac Pro is doing. I don't doubt the iMac can probably do it as well. This project here is a music video shoot that was shot uh, in 4K with red cameras. And right now I have in the angle viewer four separate angles of red. And I'll prove this all to you later, but take it on my word now, but I will prove it all to you um, later. I would expect you to edit several different camera angles of raw Red One Kodak in the multi-cam editor of Final Cut Pro 10. You can do that in Adobe Premiere Pro using an $800-$900 dollar dollar HP computer. Granted, you'd, you'd need the RAID system to actually do it, but you're talking what, an extra 300 bucks? So for, for well under $1,500, you could do it on a dollar HP system. Okay, right, so um, there we see we've got four streams of 4K playing back simultaneously uh, in, in the angle viewer. So this machine, in combination with the Pegasus RAID and Thunderbolt 2 technology, is able to do this while we're monitoring at, at 4K. Keep in mind, they're not monitoring at 4K. They have it set at 
better performance instead of better quality, which you don't really need to look at 4K footage if you're doing a multi-cam edit at full 4K, obviously. So I don't fault them on that. I mean, definitely set it back to better performance. I also want to note that when it was playing back, the, the images looked really super choppy. And I'll admit that could be because of the of the YouTube, how it transcodes, you know, your video and, and uploads it. I've seen some of my stuff look choppy once it gets up on YouTube, but when I was editing it in Premiere, it's like, wow, it's super smooth. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that it played back silky smooth. It wasn't, you know, dropping like one out of every five or six frames. I'm just going to actually post a, a little uh, video clip of my system editing Red One Kodak in its native format in the multicam um, system of Adobe Premiere Pro. Two, then I'm going to hit three, I'm going to hit four, and now we're going to go back to one, two, three, and four. And that's the way the take should be. I'm going to leave it at four and then end up, you know, with this uh, green screen at, at camera four. So we can see that it went one, two, three, four, and then it went one, two, three, four, real quick. So we did do the, the multicam editing. And I can, as you can see, it's playing it back right now in its multicam. We can see, you know, by the way her dress is, is uh, blowing, that it's playing in real time. We're not really dropping any frames. We can see her hair blowing. Uh, we can see the train. I, I should have stuck on her, on the, and here we see hair blowing too. So. We know we're not dropping any frames. It's coming out just fine. When I got the parts back in probably around March of 2014 to build my new editing system, I had no notion of trying to edit 4K footage, like Red One raw footage. It just so happened that I did get some sample clips that you can get online as well. And I was like, wow, my system, if I drop down to quarter resolution, can play multiple layers with multiple effects on them.